Right, if you have your Bible today, we're going to be in the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. And the reason I shared all that with you today is because this is actually the conclusion to the main part of the Gospel of John. If you were to read, sit down and read all through John, you'd get to this final verse and you'd go, wow, this is the conclusion. And in fact, where we will be next week is more of the appendix to the Gospel, chapter 21. So let's read this passage in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, which is the conclusion to the Gospel of John. It says this, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus, he says here, did a lot of other signs. The Gospel of John records seven famous signs. But he says here, Jesus performed many other signs. They're not written in this book, but you know, if you go read Matthew and Mark and Luke, you'll see some of those. But these are written that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah. Now, I don't know if you've got your Bible or you've got your electronic one, uh, your, your phone or whatever, but if you do, is there a heading right above verse 30? Does it, something in your Bible describe that section? What does it say? The purpose. The purpose. The purpose of John's gospel. We've been reading this whole gospel, chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. We begin to read it through this whole gospel. We get finally to this 20th chapter, this last verse. And he says, now this is why I wrote this. This is what this gospel was about. This is why this gospel was written. This gospel wasn't written just to inform you. This gospel wasn't written just to educate you. This is the reason this was written down. This is its purpose. This, 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 this morning is part of this big series we've been calling The New Beginning, and one of the challenges to having a new beginning in our life is to discover purpose. I thought about this this week when I was just talking to, one, to, my, to my kids. One of them, my middle son, Spencer, I remember six and a half years ago before we moved here, uh, we, were, we were living in Austin, and his grandparents had gotten him one of these little motorized Jeep cars, you know, and he could just drive it around the block, and we had like a, we had a sidewalk that he could walk on. And for a long time, we'd had this freezer in the, in, the, in the garage that had like healthy food in it. And we gave up on that because then it was just popsicles then. And so one day we, we walk out into the garage and the garage door is open and the Jeep is gone. And Spencer, who at this time was just pretty much not in just diapers, even though he didn't have to be, he was probably just in diapers, no shirt or anything. And we're like, where did Spencer go? So we take off running down the street, going around the block, and here he comes riding up the, up, up the street on his little motorized cart on the sidewalk, and I run up to him, red-faced, breathless, Spencer, where have you been? He said, I just went to get a popsicle. Well, that is true, okay, son? You didn't go to get a popsicle. You went for a ride around the block, because if you wanted to go get a popsicle, where would you go? to the garage, into the freezer. I was thinking about that story as I was thinking about this today, about our life. Like, where are you in your life right now? Like, what is the purpose that you're living for? Do you know where you're going, or are you just taking a ride? Are you just cruising around the block? Does your life have purpose. The best-selling nonfiction book of all time, Hardback, was written, believe it or not, by a pastor, Rick Warren, at Saddleback Church. Sold a hundred million copies. The title of that book is The Purpose Driven Life. We live in a world today where hundreds of millions of people will buy a book because they're in desperate search for purpose in their life. And this gospel tells us that the reason it was written was to tell us the purpose. The purpose. And this is that purpose. These things are written that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing, you may have life in His name. 
So how, how do we do that? What does that look like in our life? Well, let me just kind of unpack a little bit about purpose. I think probably the first thing, if you want to follow along in the outline or if you want to do it on the app, just a couple of just sort of insights about purpose, is that purpose harnesses the power of focus. My, grand, my grandparents on my dad's side lived in western Michigan, lived in Grand Rapids. And my grandfather had a, had a basement and a garage that was just filled with all kinds of cool stuff. And as a kid, I just loved to wander around in his garage. He probably didn't like it very much, but there were so many cool things. And I remember up on a shelf, there were some really shiny little discs. And I wasn't really sure what they were. But when I crawled up there, I knocked one off and I broke it. And my grandfather said, if you'd have just told me, I would have given you one. And he took one, took me, and we walked outside. We found a little leaf. We set it on the ground. The sun was shining that day. And we took out this little glass. And for the first time in my life, I saw this happen. My grandfather harnessed the power of the sun and ignited a leaf. I mean, it's incredible. How did he do that? Well, everybody knows exactly what that piece of glass is. It's a magnifying glass. Magnifying glass doesn't create light. It simply focuses it in on a single point. The power of purpose in our life is that it harnesses, it it focuses things on some very specific thing. As John writes this gospel, he says, look, I could have talked about a lot of things. He even says here he could have written a lot more. Like he could have talked a lot more about Jesus's life, right? We all think, man, I wish, I wish the Bible would have told us more about when Jesus was a kid. Like, what was it like when Jesus went to school, you know? Was Jesus good at sports? Was he faster than the other kids? You know, we have all these curiosities about the life of Jesus. We wonder all these things, but it's interesting. John says, look, I could have written a lot more. In fact, go read Matthew, go read Mark, go read Luke, and you'll see Jesus did more. In fact, in the next chapter of this gospel, this is what John says, John 21, 24. This is the disciple who testifies to these things, who wrote them down. We know his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Jesus did many other things, and I suppose it would take like in, more than encyclopedias of all the things that Jesus did that could have been written. What John says he did here is he picked, he picked specific things that would accomplish his purpose. He, he wanted us to know some specific things about the life of Jesus for a specific purpose. Now, like, what does that have to do with our lives today? Well, here's my application question. Are you focused in your life on what's most important or other things? Are you focused in your life? Do you spend your time on things that are most important or other things? John could have written this whole book about other things, what Jesus did when he was eight. (laughs) He could have talked about Jesus' carpentry skills. But what he did was he described specific things to accomplish a specific purpose. He harnessed the power of focus. Now, purpose does something else in our life. It helps us avoid getting stuck. Have you ever gotten stuck in something? Have you ever been stuck in life? Like, how do I get beyond being stuck? It it, it helps us avoid just getting stuck trapped in a situation and never being able to get out of a situation. I, I wrote this down as just kind of an observation that some people live without purpose, hoping, dreaming, wishing, wanting for everything to change. Some people live life without any purpose. You can put any blank, anything you want in the blank there, right? What, what's one that comes to your mind? how people live. They, they pray that things are going to be different. I just hope that things are going to be different tomorrow. I just wish things could get different somehow. I want things to be different. But nothing changes. 
Some people live without purpose, hoping, dreaming, wishing, wanting everything to change. Rick Warren, in, in his book, Purpose Driven Life, tells a story about a guy that got lost in the woods. And he came up to a man and he said, I'm lost. I don't know where to go. And the guy said, well, where did you come from? He said, I don't know. Where are you going? He said, I don't know. If you don't know where you've come from and you don't know where you're going, this is a problem of purpose, right? We, we, we can't just hope for things to get better. We can't just wish that things would get better. We can't just say, oh, well, I want things to get better. In fact, there's a man that Jesus met like this in the gospel. Uh, actually, it was, a, it was the woman in Samaria in John 4. Remember her? Jesus comes to the woman in Samaria, and she's at a well, and it's in the middle of the day, and he, he comes to have a conversation with her. And it's a, it's a really an interesting moment in the, in the text because, you know, first of all, Jews don't associate with Samaritans, so Jesus broke that social kind of structure. But then when they start this conversation, listen to what she says to Jesus. The woman said, John 4, 25, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Now, right in front of her is the Messiah, the Son of God in in flesh. When this happens, somehow, poof, everything's going to get better. Do you know anybody that just kind of thinks everything's going to change, just poof? How about all those people that bought lottery tickets, right? Billion dollars in lottery tickets, and you're kind of thinking to yourself, you know, the, you know how the, they got a billion dollars in lottery t- tickets is because a billion dollars was lost in order to get that. But a lot of people thought, well, poof, everything magically is going to get better. They're just sort of going through life, hoping, wishing, wanting. Albert Einstein, pretty smart guy was famous for his definition of insanity. What's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. What about our lives today? What about your life today? Do you have purpose? Or are you just sort of doing the same thing over and over again, hoping that somehow, some way, something magical is going to take place and everything's going to be better? Here's an insight I think we learned from this passage. A new beginning in our life requires both a break from the past and a clear purpose going forward. It's not just about breaking from the past, but it's knowing where we're going toward. I told this story in the first service, and I've told parts of this story before. When I was, uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, uh, I really wasn't loving high school much. And in fact, me and one of my friends, we started skipping class together. We'd go to the gym and we'd play basketball. Tim Penley and I were, were really good friends. And we would come late into you know, physical science class, drenched in sweat. And I remember the teacher going, where have you guys been? And we're like, oh, we were doing, you know, I don't know, we drenched in sweat. It's kind of obvious what we were doing. And I remember doing that several times and just kind of getting to that place in high school where I was like, you know, I just don't even care. I don't care if I drop out. I don't care if I get kicked out. I just, I just don't even care anymore. And I remember my physical science teacher, and I've told you some of, this, some of you this story before, that he took me out in the hallway, and I thought he was going to send me to the principal. I thought he was going to recommend that I just get kicked out of school. And I'll never forget, he said, David, he said, uh, if you actually applied yourself, You could be an A student. And it wasn't what I was expecting him to say, but it was a turning point in my life. Because when I went and sat back down in class, I just sat and thought about that for the whole day. As I I left for school that day, I remember I went to the locker and I took out some stuff that I didn't even know was in there, my books. And I, I put them in this backpack that I had never even used before. And I think probably the kids on the school bus probably thought I was weird because I had this bag full of books. And when I got home, my parents probably thought I was strange. I closed the door in my room. I put all my books on a table and I studied till 11 o'clock at night. And everything in my life changed at that point. The next day I went to school ready. Those of you who kind of know that turning point in my life, I mean, I graduated from high school early, a year early. I graduated with honors. I went to college. I had really good grades in college. 
I had nothing but A's after, at one point, <laughs> you know, I remember one point when I didn't, but then I went on to seminary and I had honors, and when I did my PhD, I had nothing but A's all through my whole PhD. And I look back on that moment in my life as like this turning point, as this moment where all of a sudden I discovered a little bit of purpose, a little bit of like what I could be, like a little bit more of life rather than just cruising around the block in life, that I could discover some kind of purpose, that I could get out of being stuck today. Now, here's the third reason we should look at purpose it establishes a clear metric. My dad had many talents in my, in my younger years, and one of those was he was a good carpenter, and we always had these uh, tape measures that as a kid I would disassemble, and it made him furious. <laughs> but a tape measure is something that you can use to measure things. A metric is a measurement. What about in our life? What about the measurements? Uh, when we're kids, we measure ourselves based on our height, the, the, the thing I hate most about going to the doctor is when they ask me not to get a shot or check my temperature or my pulse or my blood pressure. It's when they ask me to step onto the scale. And I'm like, if I could just pay not to do that, I would do that. Because there's just something about the number appearing there and corresponding, the, the real metric. What if we measured our lives spiritually? What if we measured our, the height of ourselves spiritually, the depth of our spirituality? Purpose helps us to do that. As we come to this conclusion statement here in the Gospels, we come to this statement about what Jesus says. It's, I, want, I don't want anybody to walk out of here today and not know the purpose in this Gospel. And it's possible you will. So let me tell you what it's not. The purpose is not just knowing Jesus is teaching, right? Because he could have said that. He could have said, I'm going to write down everything that everyone remembers about everything that Jesus ever said and did. He said, I'm not going to do that. It's not just knowing Jesus is teaching. It's not just knowing that Jesus died and rose again, because Matthew already knew that, and Mark already knew that, and Luke already knew that. People were already preaching that. He didn't write the gospel down so people would know that, because many people already did. It's not just believing that Jesus is the Messiah. It's that whole statement, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. It's that fourth thing. It's believing Jesus and receiving life. Today, if you hear this sermon, you walk out of here and you go, you know, I think I know a little bit more about the Gospel of John. I think I know a little bit more about Jesus. Then this sermon is a failure of epic proportions. If all we know is a little bit more about Jesus, if all we know is that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, if all we know today is that Jesus is the Messiah, but we walk out of here unchanged by that reality, then all of this was without purpose. Paul made this point so many times in his letters, and I just sort of picked it random. One of the, ones that he, one of the times he makes this statement, it's in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. He says, you were taught... With regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, to get a new attitude, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This is what you were taught. You were taught that your faith was supposed to create a new beginning in your life. That your faith was supposed to lead to a breakthrough. That after months and years of following Christ, that you are more like Jesus today than you were yesterday. That you were a year from now. That you're moving in a direction that has purpose. And it's leading you to become more and more like Him. 